Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training. I am back from having no hydro and no internet for a few days. Things happen, accidents happen, here's some pictures. But anyways, today I am going to talk to you about some dribble handoff basketball plays that use the five out formation and these are going to be some motion offenses that you can run, but also some set plays that you can run out of the five out. So let's get down to the clipboard and let's check these out. Okay, so first in this play, these are all going to be dribble handoffs and this first play is going to be a motion offense. So we're going to have player one do a dribble handoff for player two. Player two is going to use that, that screen, that's essentially what a dribble handoff is, is a screen and then a handoff. And then he's going to go over, he could take that shot, he could also drive towards the rim as well. If he can't, he is now going to go and do a dribble handoff with player 3. Now, at the same time as this happening, when player 1 finishes his screen, he's going to go and screen away for player 5. Player 5 is going to go and fill that spot. Player 3 is going to get that ball. Now he could drive or take that shot. He could also pass over to player 5 for a 3 point shot. And then player 1 is going to then pop out. And now we're going to be having player 2. He's going to be going and screening away for player 4. Meanwhile, player 3 is going to be doing a dribble handoff with player 5. As you can see, this keeps on moving. So we're going to have player 5, again, driver shoot. And now player four is going to be popping up to the free throw line extended where that person could be open for that three point shot as well. Now, if he can't do any of that, then what's going to happen next is player five will do a dribble handoff with player four. Player three is going to be setting a screen down for player one. And as you can see, this keeps on motioning through. This is the same motion over and over again. Now, what happens where, let's say, we screen down, player one is open, he gets that ball passed to him, but by the time he gets that ball, player one has caught up to him. Player three is now out towards the perimeter. We're going to have player five screening away like normal. What we're going to be having now is us starting the play all over again. However, we're going to be now starting with player one passing, of course, or sorry, not passing, doing a dribble handoff with either player four or player three. Now, same idea as what we had going before. Let's say, however, we start going by doing a dribble handoff down to player three. Player three gets that ball. He's going to be going up top, and he's going to be doing a dribble handoff with player four. Of course, he could have shot or, or taken that drive as well. Now, let's say, he does that dribble handoff. Instead of player one just popping out, we're going to continue what we were doing before and having player one screen away for player five. Player five is going to use that screen. Player four is going to be using player three as a screen because it's a dribble handoff. Now player four could take the shot of him of his own. He could hit up player five in the low post or player five could continue out towards the three point line where he could be open for a shot. Or if he's not open at all, What's going to happen now is player 4 is going to be going and doing a dribble handoff back with player 5 now because they just finished up top. Player 3 is going to then finish that dribble handoff and just like we were doing on the other side or when the ball was up top, what we're going to be doing now is having player 3 do a screen away for player 2. Player 5 is going to use that that dribble handoff. He's going to pop up top. Player 2 is going to be possibly open for a 3 point shot. Player 5 could also drive or take that shot. And player 4, he is going to be going screening away once again for player 1. Player 1 again is going to be popping along the baseline. Let's say player 2 wasn't open. This will be a dribble handoff with player 2. Just like before, could hit him up in the low post. Could hit him up at the 3-point line. Now this offense is still great for zone defenses as well. Of course I did show you the man-to-man -man defense, but since I did such a, it took a, such a long time explaining this play, I'm not going to go into how it works against the zone defense because it works the exact same way. Now, let's get on to some set plays I know you're going to absolutely love. 
So some set plays that you can run with player or with a five out offense uh, with the dribble handoff is player three could be setting a screen down for player four. Player four is going to use that screen. This is going to be a dribble handoff now with player four. Player four is going to use that screen. And now what we're going to have, personally, this is what I like to do, is have player three set that screen and seal his man so that now he is essentially posting up player four. Player three now gets to call, get called switch, hopefully gets caught on player one as a screen. Now player four could take that shot or could feed player three in the low post because he has sealed his man behind him. And now he's able to take that nice close layup. Now this play also works really well against a 3-2 zone defense as well as a 2-1-2 zone defense. The reason for that is in a 3-2, it's going to be only two post players, similar to how a man-to-man -man, uh, looks like against a 5-out. But also, the 2-1-2, that middle player, he won't be sagging down deep to guard that low post. He's going to need to pop out because player 4 on this board, he is right at the point. And generally speaking, that middle player is guarding the whole center of the court the imaginary center line, which means that he needs to pop out on the point to defend the point while letting the other two players guard the low post. So this is why this is effective against a 2-1-2, a 3-2, as well as a man-to-man -man defense. Now against a 2-3 a zone, what you're going to see a lot of is traps up top because generally speaking, right at the point, player 1 is right in between those two players' zones, so they're going to try and trap the top. They're going to try and trap the point. So what we're going to do here is having player 3, he is going to be going, setting a screen for player 1. Player 1 is going to use that screen, and he's going to be doing a dribble handoff with player 4. Now at this time... I want player 3, I want him to be rolling towards the basket, and I want player 4 to obviously get that ball. I want player 1 to roll towards the basket now as well, and now player 4, I want him to have two different options. He can either pass to player 3 or player 1. If he passes to player 3, that's going to be bringing up player 5, and that could leave player 1 open for a high to low pass for a layup. The other option is that could be sagging the defense in and could leave one of these two players open for a three-point shot and he could just kick it out to one of those two players. If, however, player four gets the ball down to player one, that's going to be sagging player five down. That's going to be bringing player four down. And now player three could go out towards the three-point line. We have essentially created a triangle, whereas... Player 3 should be wide open for the 3 point shot. Now this last play is against a man to man defense but also does work really well against a 3-2 zone. So what we're going to be doing here is having player 1 do a dribble handoff with player 2. Player 2 is going to get that ball. He is now going to be doing a dribble handoff with player 4. Now what's going to happen here is I want to see player one cutting down towards the low post, setting a pin down screen for player three. Player four is going to have that ball, and I want to see player three popping up towards the free throw line for player four to pass to for a nice close shot. Of course, player four could have taken a shot himself as well. Now, when this happens, when player three gets that ball, if this is a solid screen, this is going to be a switch. If player 1 seals properly, he could have an easy layup. The other option is player 5, if this is a zone, could be guarding really tight in the key and could leave player 5 open for a 3-point shot. Another option is player 3 could start to drive on his player one dribble that would then sag player 5 down as a help defender again player 3 would be able to kick the ball out to player 5 for a 3 point shot. Now these are all fantastic basketball plays that you can run with your basketball team. I hope that they help, I hope that they win more games for you. 
Remember, drills are very important as well, so go check out some of my basketball drills on my channel. And if you want, I can give you custom basketball practice plans. Go check out the link in the description below, and I'll see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day.